be my slave. We ask Allah to bless his messenger Muhammad وسلم, and his family and his companions, all of them, ameen. Brothers and sisters, um, I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless me on this day of gathering to articulate what I feel in here. I feel something in here. Uh, and only Allah, Imam, can help me to articulate that which I feel in here, which be a benefit to you, inshallah. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, used to make this dua, Allahumma inni a'udhubika min ilmin la yanfa'u. Oh Allah, I seek refuge with you with knowledge that doesn't benefit. What sense does it make to speak to you for half an hour with knowledge if it doesn't benefit you? And this is why Allah said in Quran, and the Allah bil mu'minina min anfusihim, and the Prophet is closer to the believers than their own selves. Everything that Allah gives to us is for our benefit. Everything that the Messenger of Allah alayhi salat wasalam give us is for our benefit. And I seek refuge with Allah from knowledge that doesn't benefit. So I'm asking Allah to help me today to articulate some knowledge, some information that's going to benefit you inshallah. My hope today is that you will be empowered. Today I'm going to ask you and me Every one of us to make a decision. And that decision will determine where we will be in the future. Someone asked the question, how long will the building stand? Answer, how strong is the foundation? Because if the foundation is not there, is not strong, the building cannot last. Most of us don't know how to build. You don't build by going up, you build by first going down. When you plant the seed, the roots go down first and get the foundation. And when you build the building, you start with the foundation, you go down first. So that when you finally go up, when you have that superstructure, that building will last because the foundation is there. Today, I want to talk about the very foundation. I want to talk about you personally and me, all of us. I want to talk today about what the Arab grammarians called Jumlatun Shartiya. A fancy word that means conditional sentences. If you study the Quran and Hadith, you will see almost an infinite number of conditional sentences. It's condition. Most of you have heard the greetings of the Muslims after they say, Assalamu alaikum. Many times they say, Kaifa halukum. You must have heard that term, Kaifa halukum habibi. And usually we translate it as, How you doing? Kaifa halukum don't really mean, How you doing? The word hal in the Arabic language means condition. It means circumstances. So when a person say, Kaifa halukum habibi, oh my beloved, how is your condition, your circumstances? Because in the end, Allah is going to judge us by our circumstances, our conditions. 
And the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, and this is the, uh, the crux of what I want to talk about today, a decision that we're going to have to make. He said, المؤمن قوي خير وحب إلى الله من المؤمن الضعيف ضعيف وفي قول خير. A strong believer is better and more loved by Allah than a weak believer. Though there's good in all of them, even a weak believer have some good. He has a man. It isn't the highest level of Iman, but it's faith. And so today, we as Muslims and believers want to go to the very highest level of faith. How are we going to get to the highest level of faith? Al-Mu'minu Qawiyyu, one of the names of Allah. Lahu Asma'ul Husna. Allah has the most beautiful names. One of them, Al-Qawi. Al-Qawi, the strong. So we want to be, uh, we don't want to be weak Muslim. We want to be strong Muslim. The essence of the faith I take from Surah Tabaka, <laughs> Those who believe in the unseen, that's what faith is. Let tadkhulu jannah hatta tu'minu the prophet said you never go to paradise until you believe wa la tu'minu hatta tahabu and you never believe until you love one another faith in the unseen and this is what i want to leave you with today so that our iman can go to the highest level and if our iman our faith go to the highest level, we'd be able to achieve things that you can never even imagine. And I'm going to prove to you from the Quran and the Sunnah what I'm saying. Prophet Muhammad, peace and, one, peace and bless him, be upon him one day, said to his wife Aisha, Yeah, Aisha. Oh, Aisha. Hatha Jibril, Yaquru alayki salam. Oh Aisha, here is the angel Jibril. And he gives to you salams. Qalat, she said, alayhi salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Return the salams to him. Peace and blessing and the mercy of Allah on him. And then she said, you see what I don't see. In another narration, she said, You see what we don't see. What do you mean? One of the faith of a Muslim is that they must believe in angels. This is part of your iman, your faith to believe in angels. We can't see them, but we believe that they're there right now, right now at the door of every masjid, your Juma are angels taking the attendance of the people who come in for Juma prayer. And when the, uh, the imam gets on the member, the angels fold up their books and start recording the people, the names of the people who came in. You have to believe that. They're angels right now. Here, we can't see them, but we believe in them. Because part of the faith, the prophet said, is to believe in angels. So she believes her. I, I can't see. I don't see Jibril. But if you, the messenger of Allah, said, Jibril gave me the salams, I'm returning the salams. That's faith. So today, brothers and sisters, I want to really hammer home empowerment to be strong. You Muslims are the strongest people on the face of the earth. On paper. <laughs> you got to hear me out. Because it's up to us how far you want to go. Theoretically, 
If you read Quran and Sunnah, there should be no one on the face of the earth anywhere close to the Muslims. But now we want to put the faith into action. We want to manifest that strength. I want to give you uh, an example from the Quran, what I said, Jumlatul Shartiya, conditional sentence, and you see where I'm going. Allah mentions the Quran, Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu and tensurullah yansurkum wa yuthabit akdamakum. Oh, you believe, if, 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 condition, if you help Allah, Allah will help you and make strong your, your feet. That's the condition. But most of us don't fulfill that condition. This is why it is reported that Jesus would always say, O oh, ye of little faith. Because the people's faith is lacking. Now, let's see what the prophet said, peace and blessing be upon him. Ya yuhannas, qad farada alaykum al-hajj fahujju. Oh mankind, Allah has made incumbent upon you to make the pilgrimage. So they'll therefore make the pilgrimage. Every imam says hajj is fard, mandatory. Imam Abu Hanifa said it, Imam Shafi'i said it, Imam Malik said it, and Imam Ahmed bin Hanbu said it with this nugget. He said that not only is the hajj fard, mandatory, he said it's fard fawran. What do you mean fard fawran? It means that it is mandatory and do immediately. Minister Ta'ilehi Sabila, he who has the ability to do it. So what he's saying is that you can't delay once you have the ability to do it. This is opinion. Once you have the ability to do it, you have to do it. I want to take a moment to say something about Hajj to show you the great strength and what it does for us. Did you know, have you ever heard of the, uh, the, Gettys, the, the, the Battle of Gettysburg? The turning point of the Civil War, the Battle of Gettysburg, very famous battle. What you probably don't know is that every year there are people who go to that area, Gettysburg, uh, uh, Pennsylvania, and they reenact that battle. It's a famous reenactment. Can you imagine? There's been times as many as 50,000 people, they go to Gettysburg to do what? To reenact a battle that took place some 153 years, something like that. Reenactment. Well, Hajj, as you know, is partly a reenactment of what Abraham did. And Allah, as Allah said in Quran, وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ And those with him. Indeed, Allah says in Quran, you have Uswatan Hasana fi Ibrahim Walladina Ma. You have in Abraham an example and 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 those with him. So great what Abraham did that Allah makes it, He commemorates it every year and makes it incumbent upon his followers once in their lifetime to perform the pilgrimage to Mecca. Why? What lessons are we to learn from it? I just want to just do two things and then we finish from that, then I want to finish my, my talk. 
You should ask yourself the question, how many of you perform pilgrimage? Raise your hand. Very good. Excellent. Good. How many intend to perform pilgrimage? Raise your hand. Excellent. What I would do if I were you, if you didn't make pilgrimage yet, say, oh Allah, I want to visit your house. I ain't got no money. It costs $7,000, $8,000. And by the way, the longer you wait, the more it will be. Remember the first pilgrimage I made? I paid $2,000. Now it begins at $7,000. So if I were you, what I would do, say, oh, Allah, I ain't got no money, but here's $1. I'm putting this in a Hajj fund, and every time I get me some money, I'm going to put it there. You see, Allah bless you to get the money to make the Hajj. A couple of questions for you, those are veterans, you the veterans of Hajj. You know that part of the Hajj is to circumambulate the Kaaba. Go around the Kaaba. You know it seven times. You know it. You know that when you go from Safa to Marwa, go from Mount Safa to to Marwa and Marwa to Safa, go back and forth. You know it seven times. You know that the tenth of the Hijjah. You know that you go to the biggest stone and you throw seven stones. You know that the next day, the eleventh, the twelfth, and the thirteenth, you go to each one of these stones representing Shaitan. And you begin with the smallest one, then the medium one, then the largest one. In each one, you throw seven stones. Altogether, 70 stones. You know that. But the question is, why? Why this theme of seven again and again and again? Every part of the Hajj is this seven. Why? Nobody knows except Allah. Because if Allah said why, or the messenger said why, we simply said, this is what Allah said. This is what the messenger said. But when you perform the hajj, you do it with niya to perform what Allah said do. And it's messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? You with me? So what took place 5,000 years ago for us is symbolism. Hear me now. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Abraham, who was Abraham? Allah said, What taqad Allah Ibrahim Khalilin? Allah did take Abraham as a bosom friend. This is the friend of Allah, Ibrahim alayhi salat wa salam. By the way, Allah mentions in the Quran. He says that the Quran is musaddiqan lima bayna yadayhi min al-kitab. The Quran is a confirmation of the scripture that came before. So if you read the Bible, you will also see that Abraham was called the friend of God in the Bible. He's called the friend of Allah in the Quran. Allah sent Quran and we gave Abraham some test. Fa'atamuhuna. And he passed every test. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, every day we've been tested. Blessed be in him in whose hand is the dominion of the heavens and earth. He created death and life to test you who's best in conduct. And you are being tested and I am being tested every day. But no one was given a bigger test or bigger test than Abraham. He was given an incomprehensible commandment to sacrifice his own son. You think that was easy for him? His heart must have been bleeding. But he's going to submit to the commandment of his Lord. So he takes, he's going to now, he's going to go to uh, a minna, he's going to sacrifice his son like Allah told him to do. 
And on the way there, lo and behold, here comes Shaitan. Jibril told Ibrahim, hit him with a stone. And Abraham listened to Jibril, the angel Jibril, and he threw seven stones at Shaitan. And when he threw the seven stones, Shaitan disappeared. The biggest stone. By the way, brothers, I don't know if any of you have been to prison. I ain't been to prison, but let me tell you what they tell me. Now you, can, you can ask out Imam Furkan. He, he knows better than me. Brothers, if you ever go to prison, I'm not saying go to prison. Don't go to prison. But if you go to prison, what, Imam, what they tell me, they say, go and get the biggest prisoner and knock him out. This is a legend, Imam. But they say, if you do that, no one will bother you. Because the idea is that you're not afraid. You go to the biggest one. And so, Ibrahim alayhi salat wa salam went to the biggest shaitan on the 10th of the Hijjah and threw the stones. But the next three days, he's He's throwing out all of the, the little shaitan, the middle shaitan, the little, the middle, and the big shaitan. He's throwing at them, and every time we throw the seven stones, he disappears. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Let's go to his wife, Hagar, because Allah says you have in, in Ibrahim and those with him a good example, right? Those of you who made hajj, think about it. Remember you went to Safar? How many people were there? <laughs> you got about three million people making Hajj. They will tell you that you didn't make Hajj, that when you're going between Safar and Marwa, you're going to see two green lights. When you get to that green light, they say you should run. Until you come to the next green light. Why? Because when Hagar was looking for people, looking for water, looking for food for her baby, when she got to a certain distance, she started running. For real. We're doing the symbolism. She did the real thing. You got all those people around you. You got all those people around you. Hagar had nobody. And when you go to Mecca, you go with a round trip ticket. You planning to come back. Hagar didn't have no round trip ticket. She was there by herself. In fact, when Abraham, alayhi salat wa salam, left Hagar and his son Ismail, he gave them, she, he gave them a, a bag of dates and some water. And he started walking away. And Hagar started running after him. Ya Ibrahim! Ya Ibrahim! Aina Tetheb! Aina Tetheb! Ibrahim! Aina Tetheb! Abraham, where are you going? Abraham, don't even turn around. And he walks and he walks. She keeps on talking until she says, Is it Allah commanding you to do that? He don't even turn around. He said, Yes. And then she said, then Allah would never, ever abandon us. So she goes back. Think about this. So now, the reality hits. Her man is gone. The prophet is gone. The food is gone. The water is gone. And now, like a mother, she's looking at her baby, Ismail, and she can't stand looking at him now because it looks like he's on the verge of death now because there ain't no water to feed him. So now she's scurrying. She's looking for somebody. She's running on the mountaintop, and she's looking and suffering the mother, and she's looking, and she's looking, and she's looking, and she don't see anything until she hears something, and she's says, wait, wait a minute, I hear something. And lo and behold, 
she looks where she put her son Ishmael and the very location that she put Ishmael is the angel Jibril and the angel Jibril begins to hit his heels in the earth hitting the heels until the water come out of the earth the well of Zim Zim, and she's able to feed the baby. You go, and you go around the Kaaba, and after you go around the Kaaba, you go drink some Zim Zim. It wasn't easy like that for her. What I'm trying to show you today is strength and power in the belief of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Almost finished. You see, brothers and sisters, Human beings put their faith in things. Believers put their faith in Allah. I'll show you what I mean. Man's greatest enemy, shaitan. Abraham took pebbles, little stones, to defeat shaitan. Because it's not the guns, bombs. It's Allah. It's not the stones, it's Allah. Some people can throw stones and it mean nothing because the Iman is not there. I'll give you another example. One of the greatest prophets ever, Prophet Musa alayhi salat wasalam, when Allah gave him this, his mission, what did Allah ask Musa? Oh Moses, what is that in your right hand? He said, it's my stick, my staff. I use it to lean on or to beat down bushes for my sheep and other things. Read the Quran again, and you will see that Musa alayhi salat wasalam defeated Pharaoh and his army with a stick. It ain't the stick. It's Allah. When Allah told Moses, hit your stick upon the stone, and the children of Israel had no water, he hit the stick on the stone, and water started coming out of the stone. When Pharaoh's army was chasing Moses and the children of Israel, they had the, the, the sea in front of them, and the army of Pharaoh behind them. There's nothing. There's no weapons. They're running away. They're running for their lives. They're running for their lives. And now some of them are beginning to doubt Moses. What, what did you do? You brought us here for this. And Moses raised the stick. And the ocean opens up. And the children of Israel go through the ocean. And then here comes Pharaoh this great army. And then Allah commands the sea to drown the entire army of Pharaoh. But, 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 before Pharaoh dies, he says something. In that moment, he's about to drown. He says something. He says, I believe in the God that the children of Israel believe and honor min al muslimin and I am one of the Muslims. Allah says, Al-An now. But Allah saves his body as a sign. When you go to ch get a chance, go to Egypt. Go to the, to the Museum of Cairo and you'll see the mummy of Fir'aun there. Allah saved the body as a sign. You see, it ain't the stick. It ain't the stones. It's Allah. I leave you with this last thought and I sit down. Do you know what country in the world has the biggest defense budget? It's the United States. Well, how much do they spend on the military? If I told you the number, you wouldn't appreciate it. 
$610 billion. Oh, okay. But if I put it this way, the United States spend more money on military than the next seven nations combined. Their faith is in weapons. This is why some of them are concerned about Iran getting a nuclear bomb. And you know the irony of all ironies? This is, this is, the, this is the greatest irony. That no nation ever used the atomic bomb except the United States of America twice in Japan. It ain't the bombs. It's Allah. Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salami ala rasulillah ala sahbihi ajma'in amma ba. I'm almost finished. If you can give me just a few minutes. <sighs> Brothers and sisters, we as Muslims are so powerful. If we were just to believe. I leave you with an ayah from the Quran. Um, I want you to think about this woman, Kim Davis, Kentucky, who refused to sign her name on a same-sex marriage. I applaud her. May Allah bless her for that, to stand up, to go to jail for principle. And that's a sign for us that we ought to be willing even to go to jail for a principle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would never abandon us. Be careful. Those who would come to you to whisper to you, Yo, man, we got to get these people. Look what they're doing to the Muslims. We got to get them. Imam in the 60s, there was a game that we used to play called Thinking Like the Enemy. And we said that if my enemy was going to attack me personally, how would he do it? So you have to know your own weakness. If I were planning to destroy the Muslims, to hurt the Muslims, I couldn't create anything better than ISIS. This, this hear me out. If I wanted to harm Muslims, I would do something like they did in 9-11. Blow up buildings. Isn't the way we go. I'll prove it to you. One of my teachers, Sheikh Jaffa Idris from Sudan, he said the Quran is a message and a method. Not only does it tell you what to do, but it gives you the context. There are two things we have to know about the Quran. First of all, the Prophet said, The best of you are those who learn Quran and teach it. Two things you have to learn about Quran. Number one, what did Allah say? If you ain't saying what Allah said, you ain't got nothing to say. In fact, Allah gives a very honorable name to the Christians and the Jews in the Quran, they call them Ahlul Ahl Kitab, the people of the book. That's an honorable name, the people of the book. But most of them put the book down. So number one, what did Allah say? Number two, as important, is what did Allah mean by what he said? Because if you take Allah's word but twist the meaning of it, you have de facto changed the Quran. You get my point? You, do you see what I'm saying or no? I'll give an example. My position is this. You can agree or disagree. The Muslims in America, our struggle must be nonviolent. Must be. No, Imam, you don't read the Quran. The Quran saying, 
وقاتلوا في سبيل الله الذين يقاتلونكم ولا تعتدون إن الله لا يحب المتدين. Fight in the way of Allah those who fight against you. But don't go beyond the boundaries for Allah love not those who go beyond the boundary. There it is. Allah say fight back, right? But what is the context of that ayat? Can I pull your coat? For 13 years in the city of Mecca, Allah never revealed one verse about fighting. Not one. The first verse about fighting came after migration and a state was established. And now Allah gives the permission for the believers to fight. Why? These believers were the best of us. They were the best of us. Can I give you one example? I don't have time to go into detail. But I give you a little tidbit. That battle of Badra, that first battle, historic. Historic. The angel Jibril asked the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, after the battle. He says, How do you how do you count those who participated, the believers who participated in the battle of Badr? How do you deem them? The Prophet said, the best of the Muslims. Jibril said, so it were with the angels who participated in the battle of Badr, they were the best of the angels. When you get a chance, if you think I'm kidding, I want you to go to the Quran today and read this. Remarkable. I mean, astounding. I mean, unbelievable. You see, brothers and sisters, it's not the weapons that you have in your hand. It is your faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you get a chance, 8th chapter of the Quran, 48th verse. 8th chapter, 48th verse. You have to read it. Astounding. You agree that shaitan is a liar? Two places in the Quran, shaitan speaks the truth. Two places. Let me give you the first one first, and I'll just say briefly. Maqala shaitan. Shaitan said, When the affair is uh, finished, Yom al no more pretense, no more fakes, no more charade. It's Yom al Now Shaitan is speaking his finest speech. He says, Allah promised you a promise of truth. And I promise you a promise and I deceived you. I'm free of you now. He's speaking the truth. Why? Because now no more deception is finished. He's busted now. And everybody of creation knows that shaitan now is exposed. He spoke the truth. And one more time, chapter 8, 48. Subhanallah. وَإِذْ زَيْنَا لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانِ أَعْمَالُهُمْ When shaitan made their deeds fair-seeming, that's the weapon of shaitan. Yo, brother, the master needs some money. There's a bank, and they're the kufar. Allah don't like the kufar. Let's go get the money. Rob the bank. And you think that's a good idea. That's shaitan speaking to you. 
sisters, when you go to college, and that young man, non-Muslim, say, Salaikum Salam, sister. It's slick. And all your life you've been a Muslim. And you don't know what it's like now going to college among these wolves. And somehow you think it's a good idea. Oh, brother, you now on your job, on in the street, in the college, some woman come to you and run some game. You're a chump. You're weak. A strong believer is better and more loved by Allah than a weak believer. Yo, brother, it's okay, man. You can smoke this weed. It's all right, Ark. Come on, Ark. Everything is real. That's shaitan. He whispers. He whispers and make your deeds fair seeming. Now listen to shaitan. Now he's talking to the Quraysh, right? They're about to attack the Muslims. He said to these Quraysh, ready to attack the Muslims, no one is going to defeat you this day. And I'm with you. The word jaru means literally neighbor. Here it means I'm with you. So shaitan, psh, 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 psh. Come on, man, go get them, go attack them. Then that man was in the church in South Carolina. It was Shaitan talking to him. Go kill those black people. Go kill them. Shaitan. When the man was in the in the uh, in the theater, Shaitan is talking to him. Now, listen to this. Oh man. Falemma Tarat. But when the two armies, those the Muslims and the disbelievers, when they met each other, Shaitan turned on his heels and started running. Why are you, why are you running? He speaks the truth. Listen to what he says. Anybody men come, I am free of you. You Christ, I ain't not, I got nothing to do with you. And listen to what he says. In the ara melaturon, I see what you don't see. What is it that you see? Why do you run away, Shaitan, and leave them alone? Why did you and Allah? Put it in the Quran for everyone to see that Shaitan runs away because he saw something. What did he see? He saw Angel Jibril and his angels. The prophet said that Angel Jibril standing there with his helmet on and on his horse, ready for battle. And the believers will tell you that during the battle of Badr, they saw some strange things, they heard some strange things. Outnumbered. I have any weapons, but they had the weapon of Iman. They had faith. And because they had the weapon of Iman, they won. They weren't dependent upon numbers. They only had 300 against a thousand. They didn't have the cavalry. They didn't, they were a ragtag, a bunch army. Oh, but they had one thing. They had Iman. It's up to you. The thing that you don't do, don't give up ever. I was at Reagan Airport in Washington, D.C. I'll never forget this. Years ago, month of Ramadan, I'm sitting down reading my Quran. And the man comes up next to me and say, is that the Quran you're reading? I said, yes. He said, I used to read the Quran. He said, are you Muslim? I said, yes. He said, I used to be a Muslim. And then he said, 
is this Ramadan? I said, yes. He said, I used to fast. So I closed my book. And I asked him why. You know what he told me? He said, I got angry at Allah. You got angry at Allah? I knew he wanted me to administer to him. He was talking because he needed me to talk to him. And I spoke to him. I gave him guidance. I told him that, sir, you have a light brown Honda that must be moved at once. That's what I told him. I said, sir, you have a light brown Honda that must be removed at once. He said, huh? I'm just messing with you. Move the car. I spoke to him until they made the announcement my flight about to leave. I stood up and said, sir, I have to go. My flight is about to leave. He said, I work for this airport. That plane cannot move until I tell it to move. Now sit down. I said, yes, sir. The reason I said, yes, sir, I felt that he needed that. I think that day he came back to Allah. Allah knows best. But I say this to you in my conclusion. What Abraham and Yaqub said to his children, according to the Quran, فَلَا تَمَوْتُونَ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Don't die except as a Muslim. Yaqub was about to die. He called his sons together and said, مَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِنْ بَعْدِ What will you worship after me? قَالُوا They said, نَعْبُدُ إِلَهَكْ We will worship your God. وَإِلَهَ أَبَائِكَ And the God, the God of your fathers, Abraham, Ishaq, Ismail, Ishaq, Ilahim Wahid, one God. وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُسْلِمُونَ And we're Muslims. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَلْ بِالْخَوَاتِينَ Your deeds shall be judged by your last deeds. Some of you have been quitting your entire life. You get married, you can't stay married. You quit. You go to school and you can't stay to school, you quit. You start classes and you can't finish the classes, you quit the classes. You got a job, you leave the job. Everything in your life, you start and you can't finish. Can you at least finish Islam? Don't be like those who left. Every masjid have two doors. Every Islamic uh, community have two doors. It has a front door by which people become Muslim, and they have a back door by which people leave the fold of Islam. Who came to the front door? You name them. Imam Suraj, Imam Furqan, uh, 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 Imam uh, 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 um, Zaid Shakir, Hazel Yusuf, Suhaib Webb, Abdul Hakim Jackson, Abdul Hakim, uh, 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 Abdul Quick Jackson, all of them, Suhaib Webb, all of them came to the front door, alhamdulillah. But the problem is that we have a back door by which people leave the fold of Islam. The job of the imams is open wide the front door and close that back door. Keep our children in the faith. It's up to us today. It's up to us to stay forward, to strengthen ourselves. The best thing that ever happened to the American people, believe it or not, are the Muslims. I close with something that a Jewish rabbi once asked his congregation.
He said, if all the Jews decided today to leave America, will America be better off, worse, or the same? I think that's a fair question to ask Muslims. If all the Muslims left America, would America be better? Would they be the same? Would they be worse? If we are doing our job, the worst thing that can happen to America is the Muslims who are doing their job, we go and we leave. I swear by Allah, don't quit. Stay on your post. Don't die until you're Muslim. Be strong. Obey Allah. Obey the messenger. Be strong, and you will see we will make a major difference in America and around the world. We ask Allah the Almighty to have mercy upon us, guide us on the straight path. We ask Allah the Almighty to help those Muslims who struggle all over the world. Ask Allah the Almighty to help the Palestinians, help those in Gaza. We ask Allah the Almighty to help the Muslims in Syria, help the Muslims all over the globe in Somalia, help the Muslims in every part of the globe in Yemen and Egypt and everywhere they suffer. ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت سميع الليم ربنا لا تأكدنا نسينا أطعنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسران كما حملت طول الدين من قبلنا ربنا لا تحملنا ما لا تعقى على نعبه وفر عنا وقف لنا ورحمنا وأنت مولانا فنسونا على كام الكافرين والحمد لله رب العالمين إقامة الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد عند رسول الله حي لا سلا حي لا البلاء قد قامت السلاة قد قامت السلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استو أبرنس شولد شولد هيل هيل الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين يا أيها الناس ابدوا ربكم الذي خلقكم والذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون الذي جعل لكم الأرض فراشا والسماء بناء وأنزى من السماء ماء فأخرج به من الثمرات رزقا لكم فلا تجعلوا لله أندادا وأنتم تعلمون وإن كنتم في ريب مما نزلنا على بلنا فاتوا بسورة من مثله وَادْعُوا شُهَدَاءَكُمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ فَإِنْ لَمْ تَفَلُوا وَلَنْ تَفَلُوا فَاتَّكُونَ لَلَّتِي وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْهِجَارَةِ وَإِدَّا لِلْكَافِرِينَ وَبَشِّرِ الَّذِينَ آمِنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أَنَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مَنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْعَارِ كل ما رزقوا منها من ثمرات رزقا قالوا هذا الذي رزقنا من قبل وأتوا به متشابها ولهم فيها أزواج متعرة وهم فيها خالدون الله أكبر
سمي الله لمن حميدا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنمت عليهم غير مغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين كل نفس ذائكة الموت وإنما توفون أجوركم يوم القيامة فمن زؤثها النار وأذخل الجنة فكذ فاز وما الحياة الدنيا إلى متى وقرار الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حميدا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Assalamu alaikum. Give me the, the afternoon announcements. Okay, brothers and sisters, the uh, meal for today. Assalamu alaikum. Takbir. Alhamdulillah. The food today is courtesy of my dear brother. He's married, got married. Ibn Khan Muhammad. Sister Fajita, so please grab a plate courtesy of their new celebration of their wedding. They want to give to the masjid and to the community. Thank you, and please buy a ticket to the convention. I'm sorry, to the banquet. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much. Yes, tickets will be on sale for Master Mukmanun's upcoming community leadership banquet. And if you all don't realize, why this banquet is being um, conducted. If you look at the property across the street, it is our intention, inshallah, to um, build senior housing across the street. The building that the masjid owns on the corner, we want to turn that into a grocery store. So these are the funds that we're trying to raise, not to actually do the building, but for things like feasibility studies and stuff like that. But we are in the beginnings of developing and growing this community in People's Town, inshallah. So towards that end, 
we're asking that you buy a ticket. If you haven't already um, bought an ad in the souvenir book, we're asking that you do that. Those who can't afford an ad, we are taking patrons. So if you want to do that, please see myself, Brother Anise, Brother Tack Beer, Sister Mariam Shack here for tickets. <laughs> yeah, uh, Brother Imam has tickets as well. Um, so we're excited about this, very excited about this. This is the first um, leadership banquet that we've ever done. Um, we do have a product of People's Town who we are honoring, the Atlanta Fire Chief, newly appointed Atlanta Fire Chief is a product of People's Town. Congressman John Lewis is also being uh, awarded along with other honorees. So please, brothers and sisters, support this effort. Project Smiles classes for our children this Sunday starting at 11.30 until 3.30. Let's give our children a head start on their future with an Islamic education. Classes are free. Educating our children is our responsibility. People's Town Reunion, which is next Saturday, September the 19th, at D.A. Stanton Park from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Come connect with, reconnect with old friends. The Grand Marshal is going to be Fire Chief Joe Baker. Um, one other thing, well, several other things. We have Saturday the 19th here at Masjidal Mukmanun, the endocannabinoid system. Sister... Vene uh, Nafisa Valida Sharif is um, making this presentation. Registration starts at 8. Program goes until 1 o'clock. That's on the 19th. Um, you must RSVP. Sitting is limited. Flyers are out on the um, bulletin board. The fourth Sunday event by the Health and Wellness Committee. Families facing challenges with adolescence, substance abuse, Mental Health and Violence, presented by Sister Baina Shaheed. That's the Talim from 2 to 3. Yes, sir. Two other announcements. Today is the last day for vending inside the masjid. Uh, vending will go outside starting next week. All vendors, please see me after Salat so you can be aware of the protocol that has been put in place to accommodate you. This Sunday at 11.30, a presentation will be made for those interested in learning more about getting your credit restored as well as getting a will and trust established. A will and trust, especially a will, is what Allah says we should all do. If you're the only Muslim in your family and you pass away, your family will make sure that you get buried as a Christian. We do not want that to happen. So all of you, if you don't have a will, you need to come to this presentation. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, yes, yes. I can, how can I forget this? I made this announcement last week. Sister Wafia Noor Dean is being honored by the Islamic Business Association of Atlanta next Saturday at UMATS. I think it's from 8.30 to 11. Tickets of $15, and we encourage everyone to um, turn out for, for that. You know, she's a member of this community. We want to give that support to her, and we want to honor her for her years of service to this community. If you've been to Iglas, all of us have put on a few pounds eating that delicious food. Assalamu <laughs> alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. This is uh, mainly for the brothers. Uh, this past Wednesday, I don't know, uh, I think a lot of the um, this past Wednesday, we had one of our youth that, that was shot. Uh, trying to someone tried to rob him. He was coming from the library at uh, Morehouse College. Um, one, of the, his name is uh, Ibn Faiz. His father comes here sometimes. His name is Rob Faiz. But Alhamdulillah, he he's okay. He's in the hospital. But we're trying to get brothers to come tomorrow at two o'clock and just we're gonna go to that area uh, around about three and just canvass the area and talk to the brothers in the neighborhood. We need to get back out. So we're trying to get as many brothers as we can. Can uh, to show up because that might happen to your son or it might happen to your daughter. So if many brothers can show up tomorrow, we're gonna meet here at the match at two o'clock. Uh, inshallah. And if you have any more questions, you can see me. Thank you, Oh, you're okay, my telephone number is six seven eight six eight three four nine two two. They haven't. They didn't. They, no, nothing. The, bro uh, the brother, the, the the guys who robbed him, 
who had, they attempted to rob him, but he basically resisted, and he was able to fend them off. And before, uh, before them running away, I think he might even knock one of them down. They shot him in his hip, I mean, his, in, his, in his thigh. But this particular day, he had his wallet in his front pocket, and it, it went through the wallet. It was uh, the wallet, the credit card, and the ATM card, you know, so it slowed it down. So he's in the hospital. He was going through therapy this morning. So, brothers, as a, as a community, we need, need to get it back out into the community, inshallah. So we're going to meet here tomorrow, too. Inshallah, we'll go down there around about 3. Thank you. As-salamu alaykum. It was more than one person. About, I think it might have been about three. So when, they, when he resisted, they ran. It, it went. Yeah, they, they talked to the police. Um, matter of fact, one, they had a silencer on the weapon. So they were in hoods and everything. Silencer. They resisted. But alhamdulillah, you know, he, he resisted. What time was this? This was at night.